So there's lots of benefits here at Direct Mail. So if you're watching this, you probably understand that. Let's kind of just get into it. Ryan, my first question for you. Yep. Um, let's, um, you're just off the top of your head, what are some of the key things that make Direct Mail work? Yep. Some of the general principles, and then let's drill down into how an agent should pick a farm and farm it. So what makes direct mail work? Why are people continue to spend more and more money on direct mail Yep. in an era that everything feels like it's digital? Yep. Well, it, it's interesting because one, direct mail is tangible. You know, I think people still still like to be able to touch and, and, and feel that product that's coming in their mailbox. And, and we felt the pain back, I'd say, in you know, 2012, 2013, when everybody was shifting to digital, everything was going social can't tell you how many businesses that we talked to at that time that did say, Hey, we're going to switch our money into digital. But then a year, six months, two years later, they all came back. And what happened in that time was mailbox, the mailbox has actually started to thin out. You've probably seen it now. A lot of people are getting their, uh, their bills through online bill pay. Um, there's not as much mail. So the marketing mail actually, as it thinned out, our product started working better. And we were more exclusive in the mailbox. And so now that more people are catching on in the last five years that direct mail is getting strong, we're starting to see a surge in it. And there's just, again, something tangible about getting that product. Um, the, the shelf life on it is long. You pull a postcard in. Now, granted, some of it, a lot of it's going to get thrown away. But for those that are interested or want to hang on to it, there, there's something special about, you know, keeping it there. It's on your kitchen counter. It's in your junk, your junk drawer. It sits on the table. It, I mean, I... I Direct mail is just something that hangs around it's, uh, digital. It's here that moment and it's gone. And, you know, direct mail has not, it, it, it's not necessary. It's not about the expense necessary. It's all about the return on investment. And over the years, we've just seen significant returns on investments. The challenge in direct mail right now, I think the biggest challenge from, from the past is um, how people track it, you know, before. So it, it's not necessarily direct mail still relevant. It's just, the way people respond to it. So it, 10 years ago, we used to do, well, we still do, we do call tracking numbers. Well, today, not as many people pick up the phone right from the direct mail and call that phone number. What they do today is everybody's got that little mini computer in their hand, which is great because the digital, but they do a, a, a small tad of research and then they call whatever number they do find online. So we've done some things to connect those dots online with the magazine to, uh, give us some attribution to the actual product itself. So we still do call tracking, um, but we have some really special things that I'll talk about today. Um, but to answer your question, just direct mail, it, it's, it's convenient. I, I, think, I think the baby boomers, to be honest, still love it. I think the millennials are probably shifting a little bit more uh, to, to digital, but even the millennials, it's unique, it's special. I, 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 don't, I don't know what it is. All I know is we see the results and they've been strong. A real estate professional watching this has a very limited budget of where they're going to put their resources for lead generation. Scott, you're on the meeting here. Say hi, Scott. Hello. So Scott is in San Diego. Very, very competitive real estate market. All right. And you decided to allocate resources in the direct mail. Is that right, Scott? Yeah, I actually didn't believe in it at first. I had a uh, father-in-law in the business and uh, got in 13 years ago. He said, I said, what works? And, and he said, notepads and postcards. And I said, you're crazy. Um, and then I did them and it worked. It, 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 I, I think to Ryan's point, you know, Ryan was trying to separate things into baby boomers versus millennials and direct mail. And I think it is much more, the shift is buyers and sellers. Buyers are looking for information online and houses and neighborhoods and they find the agent online. Most sellers want the agent who's working in the neighborhood. They want to see signs. They want to be familiar with them, not just be online. And I think that's why direct mail works so well for listing agents. So, uh, so let's talk about actually picking a target market, which I think is the first thing you have to pick before you craft the messaging and actually create the mail and do all that. Um, let's hear from you, Scott. You picked a, a target market here in, in, in San Diego. Again, very competitive market. Mm -hmm. Why don't you tell us about the size of it, why you picked it. Give us all the details of why you picked a certain area that you did. Okay. Direct mail campaign. So when I started, um, I picked a neighborhood that was was new under construction. Uh, it had 2,000 homes, and at maturation, it's 4,000 homes. The idea being, if 10% of your homes are going to change every year, I feel we as listing agents have an opportunity at about 40% of those, because everybody's got an uncle, brother, aunt, cousin in real estate that they will use without even looking for an agent. So 
you've got to have enough homes in that market to keep you busy and to give an ROI. You, you can't take 100 homes and do a direct mail campaign to it because it costs too much to do the mailing. There's not enough turnover and your odds of success are, are you know, you, you can hit and miss and have great results one year and terrible the next. The other thing is look at homes that are um, that have a lot of turnover. So like condo complexes are good because those are temporary homes. Going into the 55 plus senior community, that's that's a waste of time because in reality, when they leave, it's probably their their heirs or their estates that's going to market the house anyway. So you got to pay attention. I love families to get me a neighborhood like a master plan community where I've got a lot of families and I've got houses that go from condos up to estates. You, you've got people who are going to move a lot within that community and each sale can turn into multiple. So direct mail is awesome for that. What are your thoughts on the size of a market for an agent to start with, Ryan? You know, I've, I've talked to agents that it really depends on what, what their goal is. You know, so, some agents I know are using uh, postcards just to talk to a small radius around a, a, a home that they sold and, you know, tell that small neighborhood. And I think that's great. Um, for, for our programs, we try to do a minimum of 1500 You know, to Scott's point, I think that there's a lot of effort. There is more effort that goes into a direct mail and a solid direct mail piece. We, we do all of that. So we actually take the heavy lifting a, away from the agent. But we believe you know, it's 1500 plus, we really want to hit and saturate a market. And, and like, like Scott said, we, we have the ability and to, we have the ability to target very carefully. If someone wants, you know, only homeowners, if they want absentee owners, if they just want to saturate the area, um, if they, we, we can, we can really focus demographically, geographically. Um, but the, the key to direct mail is really frequency. I mean, if someone just says, I just want to send out a postcard or I want to send out, you know, a, a mail piece um, and do it one time and see how it works it's, it's just a bad idea. I mean, I, we've actually turned away a lot of business where people say, let's just try it out. It doesn't make sense. You need that consistency. It's like anything. No one buys one TV commercial or one radio spot. It will not work. So you need say, just like direct mail, you've got to create a brand. And, and I think direct mail is probably one of the best avenues to, for branding. Um, you know, I, I, I distinguish the two between direct response and branding. Every agent wants direct response, the Holy Grail. We all want a, the listing. But I do think that you have, it takes some time. You've got to be patient and you need that neighborhood, whether it's 1,500 homes, you know, 3,000 homes, whatever it is, to consistently see that you're serious. You know, you're out there, you're there to help them, you're a marketer, and you're going to market their home to get top dollar and sell that house. And being that in their face, in their direct mail, month after month, week after week. I've talked to some agents that they want to hit, they want to hit as often as, as weekly, which is a great strategy. It's expensive, but um, you want frequency and you really need the branding to be long-term. Yep. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to share my screen here that I think maybe the audience can, can get a little benefit from uh, just to kind of visually show picking a target market. You might be familiar with the EDDM website, Green Ryan. Yep something like this. This is the post office puts this out. You can just Google every door direct mail. And here's a picture of the United States. I'm going to type in the zip code where I used to live back in the day of 68116. And it's going to zoom me into that zip code. All right. And uh, here's this little zip code. This is actually, uh, for those of you who don't, don't know where Omaha is, Omaha is this little city right in Nebraska where I'm originally from. And I used to live right here in this 68116 zip code. And if I was an agent, I would love that because my listings I'd walk to <laughs> if I got them, if I lived there. It sounds convenient to me. It was also kind of an up and coming starter, high turnover neighborhood. And if you kind of select residential, you can kind of size up the market by selecting little courier routes like this. See this, what I'm doing here? And I think what I'm doing so far is how many homes are we up to just in that zip code? 7,000, see this? So if I drill this down, we're talking about 1500 homes, right, Ryan? Yep. I mean, that's a small market. I mean, that's maybe. Uh, our, uh, just so you know, our average agent is doing 2,500 units a month. All right, 2,500 um, is about that. Like, look how small that niche is. Yep. It's, it's literally just around like a, a section block or a, around here. Yep. And uh, you just want to saturate a very specific area with a very specific message. What's the frequency that you would recommend, Ryan? At least monthly, um, you know, at least monthly. I, I, I know some agents, though, that have been very successful going uh, 24 times a year, you know, approximately two times a month. Um, but 
our model is monthly and we have programs that are more frequent but it does of course it gets expensive you know the one thing that we can't control is postage and and like you're saying on eddm every door direct mail it's a great it's a great strategy the postage is extremely low there's some disadvantages to it um you have to, what it is is it's the post office giving um, the mailer a break to be full saturation. So you don't actually uh, address, or you don't inkjet the actual address on the actual piece itself. What we've done is we have kind of a, a little bit of a hybrid model. Um, we basically provide the EDDM postage with full saturation, but with our full saturation, as long as we had a percentage of the carrier route, we're able to pass along the same postage. Um, and so we can cut out, for example, businesses, we can cut out some if there's apartments, we can cut out a portion of the apartments. We can focus on neighborhoods and carry routes that are more of the geographic and demographics that an agent is looking for. Yeah. So it's really a strategy. You know, we really have to sit down and understand what the farm is that the agent is looking to hit. And then we can go the EDDM route. We can go, um, we can go the saturation route. Some agents say, you know, I want to hit those absentee owners. I'm in an area where there's a lot of vacation homes. I don't want to hit you know, in, in here in San Diego, let's say Del Mar, I don't want to hit the, the renter, you know, that's the vacation renter in Del Mar. I want the owner of that. So we can actually push those magazines or postcards out to wherever they live in Austin, Texas, for example. So, so there's a lot of strategies, um, but I guess to answer your question, at least monthly. Good. And then picking a list and making sure the postage rate actually gets to the intended person. And yes. sometimes that's first class with the forwarding, right? Yep. Yep, first so, class is a little bit more expensive, but but it's yeah, we can absolutely do it. We tend to be a little bit on the less expensive side. We know we're going to get it in the mail. It takes a little bit longer, but we again we strategize all of that to try to get the best value for the for the for our agents. So, you got the you got the target market, and you have to figure out you know where your target market is. And again, you said Scott, maybe a high turnover neighborhood. What does turnover rate mean? How do you find that for you, Scott? You. <laughs> Easiest way is to get a title rep to help you out and basically pull up a farm and you can give it to them by zip code or, or street names or whatever and, and say, hey, how many homes are here and how many sold last year? And basically what you're looking at, let's say if it was, let's use Ryan's 2,500, you know, if 250 homes sold, that means 10% of the homes are selling a year. And that's um, high. Yeah, that, that is pretty high. Mm -hmm. But you, you get a lot of communities where people stay in place. And, and you don't really want to be doing a geographic farming in a highly stable neighborhood because they're not going to move as often and, and you're, you're not going to get the return on money. You actually want the less stable, the move up neighborhoods where people are going to move in and move out. Mm -hmm. Good. All right. So now we got to figure out what you actually send them. Ryan, why don't you tell me over all the years – to drive response, to get someone to consume, what do you actually mail out, let's say, once a month? Yep. So our, 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 our flagship product is a, uh, it's a digest size magazine. Um, again, we've done, we've done it all. We've done postcards. We've done EDDM. Uh, we've done inserts in the magazines. We've done magazines. Um, coming from a magazine, direct mailed magazine program, we were able to uh, leverage our other product and, and with the scale, drive down our costs so that we can provide a custom magazine, a truly, I'm going to show you, I'm going to show Scott's actually, uh, this is Scott's magazine. Um, it's, it's his own, you know, 32 page, um, fully custom magazine that is different. It's unique. It, unlike a postcard, it, 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 it feels different. It looks different. No one else has it in the mailbox. So that's our flagship product. Um, it, we, we mail it just like a postcard and we put this, uh, we, we actually do mail it monthly. Now it is a little bit more than a postcard. Um, it can be, it's a, probably about twice as much as a postcard, but um, we believe that the shelf life is much longer with the magazine versus a postcard. You have a lot of agents that do send out postcards. We wanted something unique, something different, something that separate our agents from other agents. Um, so if you're looking for really good value, the magazine is, it's an incredible product. And, you know, you can do a lot of things. You can actually put, you know, you, Scott, I'm going to use your, your book, but, you know, Scott's got a listing in here. He can, he can preview the entire listing, but he's got multiple pages where he can do multiple pages, you know, multiple listings. He can talk about the neighborhood. He can talk about the community. He can put, you can put a, a schedule of events. He can put contests in here. We have a lot of interesting reads. Um, you know, Scott talking about himself. 
So it's an opportunity to get a lot of content in one mailing and have one, one, po you know, one piece of postage hit that home. And it's a product that's going to sit on the countertop, you know, uh, sit on the coffee table, hopefully hang around a lot, you know, a lot longer than most direct mail, something that might be passed along. You know, our goal is that if a neighbor is looking at selling their home, rather than just handing a postcard, you know, hey, let me hand over this magazine. It looks like this agent means business. You know, he's serious. He has his own magazine. So it's completely fully branded to them. Um, we also have postcards. We've blended postcards into our program. And for those where it might get a little too expensive, we have a, uh, we have a large postcard. It's a six by 11. It's a, you know, it's what's considered an oversight postcard. And, you know, if you don't want the frequency necessarily with the magazine, we can actually drive the cost down and provide a postcard in between those months that, you know, you might take a, uh, you might slow down for the magazine. We don't always recommend that. We really recommend the magazine monthly, but we understand we're being, you know, considerate of people's budgets. That's great. Okay. So why the digest? Yep. I mean, there's so many different, I mean, here's my stack of mail. Let's pull up some mail, Ryan. How's that sound? I love it. All right. All right. So America sorts its mail over the waste basket. Yep. Viral marketing sends letters. There you go. I like that. I'm going to keep that. Mortgage bill. Yep. Keep that. Postcard that I'm not going to read. Trash. Alpha. Trash. Yep. Mortgage. Keep it. Mortgage. Keep it. What's this? Discount mugs. Yep. Sent me something. Um, Berkshire Hathaway, my one share with Berkshire, uh, I'm going to keep that. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, American Express sent me this. Yep. I it, wish I had some more stuff. It's actually kind of cool. Like looking through direct mail as you it, talk I'll, about I'll, direct mail. I'll tell you, it's interesting. So obviously it's working for those businesses or they wouldn't be mailing those. So yeah. direct mail works. We just took it a step further, but why the digest size? We studied this about a decade ago, a little over a decade ago. We actually had many focus groups and we brought in all those pieces to them. We brought in the eight and a half by 11 magazines. We brought in the envelope pieces. We brought in the, the, the multiple ads inside the, the, the envelope. We postcards, every size. And we narrowed down and we, we pulled up, you know, one of them was a digest size. And we, we studied them and we asked, what do you like the most? And they, nine out of 10 people had focused on this digest size and a couple of reasons for it. One, it's silly things that you wouldn't think about. One, um, when you're actually stacking uh, magazines in your house or in your kitchen or your coffee table, typically people stack from the biggest to the smallest. The smallest size magazine is usually what sticks on top. That, so that was an interesting point. Everyone's got a junk drawer. When you throw a larger magazine in a junk drawer, you block the junk. With a smaller digest size magazine, you actually can throw it in there and it actually stays there longer. So it's all about shelf life. The digest size actually, this is, it, it's a convenient size that hangs out kind of everywhere. This is, it sounds gross, but people put stuff on the back of their toilet. It's an easy size. I know that sounds terrible. It's probably the last thing I want to say, but I'm just being honest. It fits in just about every purse and briefcase. I've seen our magazines go in the back pocket of, uh, of, of folks. Um, it, it's, it's just, it, it's also manufacturing wise, it's a very efficient size. So we're able to pass those costs along to our agents so they're not only getting the scale that we have of a million magazines a month, but they're also getting a really efficient size. The other thing that you'll notice is there's a lot of mail that you'll see that has these, what they call tabs. They're little stickers that hold a multi-page product together. You have to actually, you have to rip it. Mm -hmm. um, this is a, it took us a while to develop this, but there's no tabs on this product. So when this comes in the mail, it's already open. It actually, it, it falls open. That's, that's um, really important. That's great. Yeah. And, and, you know, in all those mails, direct mail, there's barriers to entry, right, for the actual direct mail. We don't want someone to have to open up the envelope. We don't want them to have to tear the tabs. We don't want them to have to spend any extra time than, than is necessary. So this, it's a very simple product. They can flip through it quickly, make a decision if they like it. And if they like it and it's pretty enough, you know, th th there's something about the aesthetics of it, they'll hang on to it a little bit longer. And we believe that they're going to throw those postcards away a little bit quicker than the magazine. There's something about that that they're like, you know what, let me just hang on to it to see what's in there. I don't have time now, but there's some cool stuff in here. And in fact, Scott's got a, I, I love this, Scott. He's got a, um, you know, a, a free kids single scoop ice cream that Scott's worked out with a local uh, business where he's giving them a free ice cream. You can't do that with a postcard because you only have so much real estate. 
You have 32 pages of real estate, no pun intended, in this magazine. So you can be extremely creative um, where you can't really do that with a postcard. So, you know, it, it, it's kind of an, you can put all these concepts, all this creative into your one book. And the beauty of it, and I know you're probably gonna ask this question later, is we do all of it. So yeah. we actually have a full uh, team of designers. We have marketing um, experts. And so we assign some, we assign marketing experts to an agent and they they deal with our designers and we try to make this as painless as possible because we understand that is the biggest challenge we've found with agents is they just don't have time. They don't have time to think this through and it's overwhelming to see a magazine. So we've taken that pain away and we've, we, we've had some agents where we'll create the magazine without any of their feedback and they're blown away by what we've given them on a first round. And then we make some small tweaks and, uh, and then going forward, you know, they spend less than an hour a month in some cases, but you do get what you put into it. So some agents have put more time into it. I know Scott puts more time into his. Um, you, you will see different results. I love it. I think it's great. So what's the call to action in it that gets someone to respond to the agent? That's a good question. And I, in fact, I think Scott might have some better answers on that. Um, we've, we've toyed around with different calls to action. Um, Really for us, it seems that the, the market and the different farm people respond differently. So, you know, whether they're pu putting some type of an offer, um, they have some type of, you know, really hot listing. Um, we're always throughout the magazine, though, pushing people to call the agent, you know, just, just to call to get some information. You want to know the, um, the home value of their home. We can actually put that in the magazine as well. You know, and everybody's got their home value page, their, their digital page. But we're using a lot of the calls to action agents are already doing, and we're just translating it into a print, into a print form. And again, because it's 32 pages, we have an opportunity to put a lot of calls to action throughout the book. But Scott, I don't know if you have anything that specifically worked for you and your farm. No, I like the fact that you guys do. So one of the nice things about the magazine is you guys take 10 pages of it and it's all your content. And one of those is a, that golden key search you do where you're pitching in a thousand dollars for people to find a key in the magazine and then you're collecting email addresses and addresses and forwarding those back to the agent um, if anybody's uh, you know showing a lot of interest, but at least they're getting then the magazine electronically also from then on. So I like that. It's kind of a, a way to get somebody into a drip system or whatever online marketing you're doing. Um, you really have an opportunity just to extend your brand. I mean, if you normally, you know, if you're normally a hey, I guarantee you a home sale, you you can do something like that. Um, the other thing you can do is use a lot of different, um, I, I've broken my magazine up into different sections. So I have one section where a lender um, writes an article every month and, and one where I feature a neighborhood uh, business because then people are interested in it. it, it, it you hit the, the, the nail on the head. Shelf life is so important. I mean, a postcard, you got 10 seconds. If they're thinking of selling their house, then you nailed it. If not, it's in the trash. This sticks around and that's what I found is good. I had, um, that ice cream story, ice cream article was, was, was kind of a funny story because they sold the ice cream store. And the gal called me up and said, somebody came in with this coupon. We're not going to honor it anymore. I don't have to. It's my store now. I said, okay, I'm sorry, but the magazine's going out. So we just emailed the list of people who get the magazine in the area and said, hey, we're really sorry. This thing already went out. She called me three days later and said, I am so sorry. I misunderstood. I would love to do this. Keep me in the magazine. So people read it, they get it. And um, yeah, the more little hooks you can put in there, it does a couple of things where you're not recreating content every month. It's there and it more, it's more interesting. And it's got value. We've got some, we've got some fun ideas on what we want to do with it going forward. It's been great. That's great. And, and, and I'll, I'll touch real quickly on, on what Scott's saying. Yeah, that golden key contest, we put it on some of the front covers, you know, Scott's got on his, and then I'll, there's a, a page dedicated to it. We do, we give away a thousand dollars on the agent's behalf. We, we fund it. Um, people write in, we get all the, the contact information, we call and we literally, um, we, we grant somebody a thousand dollars. So that is coming from Scott Vogue. Cause again, the, the, the recipients of this magazine, they don't, they don't really understand who we are. We're just the, we're the people behind the curtain and Scott Vogue's name is on this face is on this. And he's really given away the thousand dollars. So, um, it's, it's a, it's a, been a great program. Um, but we have a lot of little hooks like that. We've got some different referral programs inside of the magazine, but again, it goes back to just have the, having the ability in the real estate to get really creative and the sky's the limit. So our team tries to work with the agent and understand their farm and come up with something creative. We've, we'll, we'll, we'll do neat write-ups for agents. Um, 
that are specific to them. We'll talk about uh, events going on in their community. So there's a lot of uh, a lot of ways that we can really leverage the the size of it. That's great. So uh, a farm of 2,500. What's the cost of that roughly? So we have we've been testing recently um, over the last month or so, and we're, we're we're making some changes. The cost is typically about if you're good if if you're going to do a magazine every single month. It's a little more than a dollar plus postage. It, it, you know, touch more than a dollar plus postage. If we blend in postcards, we can get it down to as little as about 70 cents or so with the postcard blend. So it's hard to say exactly what the cost is, but I'd say um, a fair amount is you're going to pay a, 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 about a buck or more or a buck or, or less than a buck if you blend in those postcards. So I know Scott's on more of a program of, of every month and hitting that farm. It does get a little bit more expensive. But, um, you know, I, I think you can think around a dollar plus or minus, but again, you can talk to our team and we can really work something very, um, creative out that will keep your costs low. But this is, this is like really for expert agents. This is not your typical, let me just buy, you know, a couple hundred postcards and randomly send it out. This is a true marketing campaign that takes some serious, um, uh, commitment and, and discipline. Um, so, you know, if you're, if you're serious about, you know, your, your business, then we're definitely a good uh, team to work with. And we'll walk through all the prices and whatnot. And, and something else I want to touch on, Frank, is um, the digital element of it. We still very much believe in the digital element. And we actually ha have also been testing um, our, all of our digital side for the last year or so. We've got a, a program we call it TNC Wired, where we send out a ton of of uh, Google ads, they're all branded to the actual agents. It's connected to the magazine. We look at, we make it look very similar, but we are putting a ton of ads out in the farm of the agent. We're doing the same thing on Facebook and Instagram. We tie it all together. We actually, we put a pixel on the agent's website. And so anybody that goes to their website, uh, we're retargeting them. We're following them quite a bit. We provide a dashboard to the agent so they can see all their stats. They can see the, I mean, I've seen some, Scott, I haven't looked at your, at your dashboard lately, but we're getting agents that we're seeing you know, hundreds of thousands of impressions um, on Google and their social feeds. And the retargeting is pretty incredible. That's what we're trying to do. We're trying to get the magazine to drive them to their site or their home value page. And then we keep, fo we keep following them. And we do that month, you know, month over month. And before you know it, you've really established a solid brand as a true expert in that farm. Um, and something else that I'll want to touch on quickly, we've been beta testing this for about a, about a couple months now. We're about to, to go very heavy live with it. It's something called lead match. And going back to the fact that direct mail works, but people don't really respond to it the same way that they used to a decade ago. Not only do we provide a call tracking number, which sometimes is a bit um, not completely accurate, because again, not everybody calls the exact number from the, the magazine, but with that pixel, it's a little com complicated, but with that pixel that we put on the website, we're actually tracking everybody that goes to our agent's website that allows us to put the pixel on and then the database. So the database that we're either provided or we get, we actually get the mailing list in many times. We're able to connect the mailing list along with uh, the people that have went to our agent's website and we consider that a lead match and we pr then will provide the contact information for those folks. That's really powerful. It, yeah. No one else is doing it. It's, it's proprietary to us. It's really cool. It's very exciting. We're starting to turn people on. We've tested uh, two agents with it and um, we're, we're, it's very, it's very exciting. It's probably the most exciting thing that's happened to us in the last six months. And all of our agents are about to, about to get a taste of it. That's super okay. cool, man. Frank, can I throw something in there that I, I want to make sure everybody got is Ryan was talking a dollar plus postage, but remember, Ryan's postage is cheaper. You're not talking a dollar plus first class mail. So it's it's dial 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 down your numbers a little bit. It's more affordable than you might be thinking if that was the case. Um, and where this is really valuable for agents, if you're looking to step up into a higher price market, like a, I know you've got followings all over the all, all over the country. So you know I don't know what the average price for folks are, but if you're trying to break into that country club network or you know the estate network and you just don't really have it nobody I, I guarantee there is nobody doing a piece of this quality and it sets you aside you're going to have to get creative with your call to actions but the 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 deliverable 
is going to set you above everybody else by far. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Scott, I, I appreciate that. That that very nice of you to say, and I and I'm glad you said did the postage because I kind of forgot about that. But you're right. Our average postage that we're seeing um, is about 18 cents. I mean, it's on the lower side. That's when folks are doing more of the saturation, um, but not EDDM saturation. So you have the ability to scrape those lists. We you know we do that and get a little bit more targeted. But it's about 18 cents now. If you want to get if you want to go to those absentee owners or if you want to um, you know, spread out a little bit more and be a little bit more focused on some demographics, then it is going to go a little bit higher. But this is not first, you know, this is not your really expensive first class mail. We do marketing standard mail and uh, we really keep the cost low. And again, because we are able to dollar, you know, we, we dollar cost average basically the, the magazine with postcards now. So we can bring a product for not much more than a, than a big postcard. I mean, again, because of our volume, we can give a monthly product. We have some agents now, we have a dominator program. It's called it the dominator. And they're looking at doing a postcard and a magazine inside the same month. So 24, you know, 24 units um, a year. So that's another uh, way that we can really dominate a market. That's great. Great. So I think what I'd like to kind of transition now just a little bit is, it, well, is there anything else about direct mail you wanna share? We have the frequency, we have the message. Yeah, picking the target market, we know roughly the cost is about a dollar, you know, and uh, the return on investments kind of just depends on the price point and the commission rates and what yep. your commission is. That's the risk you take as a business owner, right? Yep. But let's talk about really how to, whatever that ROI is, go even deeper with it. And I want to share with, well, do you have anything else you want to add with direct mail online? Not, not necessarily. Um yeah, not, 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 not at the moment. It's, it, okay. it works. Uh, I'll say that it works as long as you give it the time. If you give it the time, I, I will say this. We've had some clients that have come in and after, you know, two months, they don't get a listing or they don't, they don't get um, really the immediate results that they want and then they leave. And I say, oh, what a, what a waste. And I understand it's an investment and it is a risk, but there's nothing that I hate worse than somebody bailing too soon. What we've seen is if somebody sticks it out, and if you think about it in terms of a real estate agent and the commissions involved, and let's say they go a couple months and they don't, they don't get that listing, but let's say they were to go a couple more months and they get that listing, it then covers, you know, it does, or, or, or multiple listings, whatever the return on investment is and whatever the average, you know, uh, the home value for them, if they give it the time, typically it will pay for itself. We will get enough branding out there. We'll get enough calls. But if you, if you don't give it the time, it's not going to work. The one thing I do want to say, Frank, is um, there is something else unique about the magazine. We, uh, uh, look, unlike postcards, this is not just a direct mail piece, but it's also somewhat of a listing tool. I, 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 this is a big deal. We, we also we print extra copies for our agents. And so if they want 50 extra copies, 100, 200, whatever the number is, we don't care what they do. We have some agents that are putting the magazine in local coffee shops. And they're gone. I mean, I've, I've talked to people, they put them in the morning and, you know, they put 20 of them in and they go back the after afternoon, they're all gone. I've heard agents put them in dentist's office. Agents pass them out to their clients. Agents drop them off by hand. I mean, they can do that if they want in their own neighbor, in their own neighborhood. It's not a postcard. It's a magazine. So they, it, and it's their own magazine. So there's multiple uses for this to distribute it however an agent wants. You wouldn't really do the same thing with a postcard. You wouldn't put a po you wouldn't put a stack of postcards in a coffee shop or the dry cleaner, but you would with a, you would a magazine. And then there's something interesting about it: the, the fact that people are taking them. I've seen postcards sitting in a coffee shop. We've tested this, and magazines sitting in the coffee shop. The magazine's taken, the postcards not, and it's because there are other interesting reads and things that are in there that you know can can waste some time while you're sipping on your coffee. So, anyways, I just thought that was a it's an interesting point with the product itself. Great. So I think the whole point of all this is to meet the homeowners. They call you, you know, you actually want to talk to them and build a relationship in that farm of 2,500. And I don't know, a good turnover rate's maybe 5% is possible. So what, 100 and, 125 homes are going to sell. And in some of these markets, you just get a couple of those, you're doing pretty well, you know, especially out here in San Diego, all right? Um, there's multiple layers to maximize that farm of 2,500. So you have the direct mail. You also have the online retargeting where people visit your website, they start seeing you online, which isn't very expensive. Those are very small audiences to reach online, yeah. right? But um, you also have, once you meet them, you know now you can actually get their email address and permission to stay in touch. 
and you can't just spam them all if you don't know who they are through email. You actually have to meet them and get to know them. And uh, even if you're going to go out and door knock, you're going to call, you're going to hold a community event, this is a really good way to do that. So I want to kind of share some ROI numbers just on the database of the Mets. Let me share this with you. So this is uh, uh, Gary Keller at Keller Williams, who's uh, one of the largest brokers, as anyone probably here knows, in the country and has done a lot of research and has a whole research on, on their database. And um, this would be the homeowners you meet in the 250. So for example, if you actually somehow managed to talk to and meet, let's say 630 of the homeowners of the 2,500 person farm over time, however you decide to do that. You know, there's an extra 50 to 100K in commission just by touching your database as well of the people that you meet. And as that database grows of the people that you meet, this is very important, your commission rates start going up. And for many agents, you'll find that, you know, most of their business comes from five sources. And honestly, for the ones that are profitable that aren't just constantly chasing the online leads, you this, unless you have this big engine running of showing agents and ISAs and buyers agents and pay-per-click management and the expensive CRM for everyone to search for homes, um, it really is database and farming. It's working a niche farm of homes for listings. And once you meet people, not only your past clients in your sphere and stay in touch with them, but the people you meet in your farm, those are two of the main sources for most people. So, you know, if you just went out, I'm just going to share this really quick, right? If you just added three people a day to your database, you're like, all right, I'm going to go out to this farm and go door knock, maybe to hand them the mailer, Ryan, or I'm going to call them, or I'm going to go to the club or the community event where a lot of those homeowners are. And if I could just somehow actually talk to three homeowners a day and say, hey, it was great speaking with you. You know, I uh, published the Neighborhood Connection. I like to send you some of this stuff through email as well, in addition to what you're getting through mail. Um, would that be cool? I think it's really helpful. You'll enjoy it. I think people would say yes. And if you do the math on that, even if you started with a database of nothing, nothing, that's 15 people a week you add to your list or 720 people a year. And if you add 720 new legitimate Mets in your database, ideally homeowners and I drove a farm with the best people to add to your database because they're homeowners yeah. near you and have homes to sell. You can uh, increase your income by that, probably that recommended amount. And I've asked around a lot of people. And everyone says, yeah, that's uh, that's pretty on point. That's pretty doable. So the question is, what do you email them? What do you send them? Well, you send them maybe the online version, right, Ryan, yep. of the neighborhood connection. Yep. So let me kind of show you an example. This is not the neighborhood connection, but this could be very easily rebranded as such. And this is, you know, my name's Frank. I'm with Viral Marketing. I would probably say a little more of the digital side, um, or at least the database video side, uh, to complement what Ryan's doing, is uh, starting the Silicon Valley Real Estate Journal or the Silicon Valley Neighborhood Connection. Right, Ryan? Yep, absolutely. And someone could start a video blog, publishing helpful educational videos, answering commonly asked questions just like this. So he has his videos here on the left, call to actions to find out what your home is worth and to search for homes. And that looks pretty cool. It really kind of positions you very well as this expert. This is something put together. You can click any one of these, all right? And when you click it, you scroll on down and now hopefully the videos start popping up. Let's see if I can play one. Hey there, Brett Jennings with Silicon Valley Real Estate Journal here. I want to welcome you back to our video blog. Thanks for tuning in. Our topic today is the often forgotten costs when buying a home. The neighborhood connection. Or the zip code even. Now back to the topic. Five often forgotten. Is that cool? So this is a really good way to stay in touch. And you start sending these videos out by email. You start sending them out online. But really the big the, the, the big difference that using the viral service versus something like Ryan's is permission. You know, you're direct mailing all these people without their permission, which is fine. That's how it works, right? There's commercials in your TV show without your permission, aren't there, right? You could do it that way, but you, through email, you can't send broadcast email without someone's permission, which requires you to meet them and get permission to stay in touch. And once you have that, it's kind of like gold. Now you can start staying in front of them that way with videos and touching them that way uh, to really kind of make more of a full rounded niche advertising program that positions you as an expert. And, and Frank, I want to add, add something. The, 
the digital page, the pages that you guys are building with the videos and whatnot, there's so many bells and whistles with what we do. And I, I probably can't even touch on all of them mm -hmm. in, in just this, this session today, but we do provide a digital uh, link, a digital magazine along with their magazine, which is really cool. It's like a, it's very interactive. You can literally flip the pages with your, you know, with your mouse or your finger. It's, it's, it's a really cool uh, piece. We can actually embed that digital magazine anywhere. So we can, uh, and it's, and it's, it's, as we update the magazine, whether it's monthly or however frequently it is, it automatically updates it. So whether yes. on what you know, whether it's on an agent's website or or the journal video program that you put together for them, that that landing page, we can put it anywhere, and it really does add a level of credibility that not a lot of other agents have, and not a lot of agents can actually say they have their own magazine. So we give that opportunity, and and a lot of our agents are putting it in their signature. They're putting you know embedding that that code so they can do their little flip book in their signature or click through to to look at their their magazine. And then I want to touch on one other thing that you had mentioned, because it's so you're so right. When you if you could generate those three extra folks a day, I'm going to go back to that lead match real quickly. It is complex. And if anyone wants to talk, you know, call, you know, call me up. Let's talk. We put you in contact with one of our marketing experts. But what I didn't explain is let's say let's say 50 people go to your website as a real estate agent, you know, your website or, or that landing page, et cetera. 50 people. If we've got that pixel, as you said, you typically will not know who went to your website. You, you really don't have, most agents don't have that type of data. But we then know that the folks that are getting that magazine, we're connecting the dots. So if the 50 people that go to their website, if 10 of them got their magazine, we can now give the agent, not only their name, their address, their phone number, but those other 40 people, okay? This is a little complex that did not get the magazine, we did not, we could not match them up techni technologically in the background. Those are their 40 people. What we can do is we do have their actual physical address. We can add those 40 back into their mailing list and now we can mail those people. So if, if, if that makes sense, we people that went to your website, they have no idea where they went. We can now send their magazine and continue touching them because we know that there's some interest. If they go to Scott Volk's website, we know that there's some reason that they went to Scott Volk's Scott Vogue did something out there in the community or some other marketing, and now we're going to keep sending them a magazine. And it's really, really cool. I'm a huge believer in multi-channel marketing. You need to do a little bit of, you know, of a lot of things. And the magazine really just supports those other, those other vehicles. Not always the end all, but it supports it. It complements it. It all works together. So. Last question, Scott, what would you add for someone that wanted to succeed with Brian? I, I really like the synergy of the magazine and viral. Um, you know, instead of people going to a what's my home worth page on that, that key search they're doing, they can go to a page that's got all my videos on it. You know, so, hey, wait a sec, this guy doesn't just have a magazine, he's got a video blog. The cross marketing there, and, and to be honest, you know, Ryan's talking about a whole lot of things and I'm in his backyard, but a lot of it hasn't been rolled out yet. And as it gets rolled out, it, it's really exciting. I've done, I had my own radio show. I've done podcasts and when you sit and you create a one hour podcast with guests and you look and you had a hundred people, 50 people watch it or listen to it. Those videos that you guys are doing for me, now I've got a pretty large database, but I'm getting 1200 views each one. That's, that's big. Um, you know, so viral it's, and, and the nice thing is with both of you guys, it's almost turnkey. I mean, and I have a call every two weeks and with, with your guy and, and we tape two videos and Ryan's, Ryan's guy, Lee hounds me and I get him a couple articles and I go to my folks for articles. They take my listings and boom, it's probably a total of five hours a month worth of work. And I, I'm a marketing guy. I was, I was a CEO with a marketing background and I'm finally comfortable letting my marketing go. You guys are doing it better than I could. Hard thing to do. Yeah. I, have str I struggle with it even in my own company. Yeah, it's just it's it's you want to hold that. That's your jewels. But yeah. once you finally find somebody who does it better, you you're like, all right, go do it. I'll go sell houses. Good, that's great. I'm trying to find a um, an example here if I if I can to pull up on the screen. It may not be the best resolution, but maybe the audience can see this. Uh, there's a book that was written that I think everyone should read, and it's timeless, called The Millionaire Real Estate Agent, and. Um, Again, this isn't the best resolution I can pull, but basically, uh, if, what you can see here, let me see if I can maybe get this snap. You might have to resize your computer screens. I want to try this. 
There we go. Let's try that. That might look better. Oh. Okay. Basically, you divide your world into the people that you haven't met and the people that you've met. Brian, you do an amazing job at staying in touch in geographic and demographic farming, sending out a piece of direct mail once a month to get new business. That's what this owns. This is why these two work well, so well together, Scott. Yep. Then, Ryan, you also have the benefit with the newsletter if the agents would send out the emails and send it to the digital and whatnot to stay in touch with the Mets. And Viral can maybe take that a little bit further with some videos and whatnot like I showed you. But once you actually meet people, not only in your farm, but also your past clients and sphere, they go on to a touch campaign where they get a little more frequent communication from you. And you probably a lot of repeat and referral business. So when you add in the new business from the farm, your repeat business and referral business from the database, you kind of start selling more homes, which is the whole point, right, Scott? That's what it's all about. Mm -hmm. What else, Ryan? How does someone get a, a touch of you? What's the first process? What's the first step in the process to uh, uh, you know, th look into getting a farming campaign in place? Yeah, so I mean, the, the easiest thing to do is, is go to our website, um, just because you can educate yourself on what the product is. You can do a little bit of research there. We've actually have a pretty robust site where you can understand it a bit better. You can watch some videos from, from some agents. You can, um, you know, there's some, there's some examples, some digital uh, sample magazines on there and then schedule a demo. I mean, that's the quickest thing or just schedule a demo immediately and our, you know, talk to our staff. Um, you will immediately be contacted by a marketing expert. They'll jump on the phone with you. They'll explain the product. Uh, they'll, understand your needs you know we really are are about understanding what our agents have done what they want out of the campaign and then we we, we figure out if there's a match you know sometimes there's not a match sometimes it, it doesn't make sense and we're really honest and open and we'll you know we'll tell you so if it makes sense um we'll carry down that you know that path and we'll you know we'll talk about pricing of course and we'll help uh, structure a mailing uh, area we'll actually jump onto a uh, to a webinar like this with, with our clients and um, we'll walk them through, uh, you know, look at the, you know, the database, the farm, show them about how many they can hit. We can, we can cut it back. We can add to it. And uh, that's where it starts. But I would just say, go schedule a demo and someone will contact you and walk you through the whole process. That's great. Ryan, thanks for your time today. Scott, thanks for joining us, man. We appreciate the uh, insight from someone doing it. Hey, thanks for having me. Thanks guys. Thanks guys. Done.